Hello everyone. Today we will learn a new protocol, which is the very important routing protocol, OSPF, Open Shortest Path First. In this lecture, we will divide the total content into the following three parts. First, we will give the overview of OSPF. We will introduce the classification of dynamic routing protocols. So first, let's have a quick review on why do we need dynamic routing protocols. Actually, in last lecture, we have introduced that there are dynamic static routing protocol and dynamic routing protocol. And why static routing protocol is not good enough? That is because the static routing protocol is defined by the administrator manually. So it's very difficult for the people to uh, design the routing algorithms on very large scale networks. Mm, besides, if the network condition changes very quickly, then human cannot do dynamic response to this network change. So to solve these two problems, actually, uh, people designed this dynamic routing protocols. If there are link failure or the link condition changed, the, using these algorithms, the routing can be dynamically changed. For example, in this network, previously the best route for R1 and R2 will be in through this link. But if this link breaks down, then the algorithm can dynamically change to another route. Actually, we also talked about the classification of dynamic routing protocols by whether this routing protocol are run in within one autonomous system, the routing protocols can be divided into interior gateway protocol and exterior gateway protocol. If the routing protocol are run within one autonomous system, then they are the IGPs. So OSPF belong to the IGP category. And by according to the working mechanism, Actually, the protocols can be divided into distance vector and the link state. And OSPF actually belongs to uh, link state routing protocols. Before talking about the link state routing protocol, let's introduce a little bit about what is distance vector routing protocol. So actually in distance vector, one router will run the distance vector uh, routing protocol periodically, and they will flood the routes and each router on a network actually they only clear about where is the destination and how far is the destination so for example here r1 only knows that if i want to go to this destination i must go through r2 and he only know a distance vector which is which gives the distance from R1 through R2 until the destination, they give the cost of this path. But R1 doesn't know the detailed topology. For example, he, uh, it doesn't know whether there is the R3 or R4 in between. That is the distance vector routing protocol. They only know the local information, but not the global information. And they calculate the route only basing on the neighboring information of the neighboring route. In contrast to, to distance vector routing protocol, actually another kind of algorithm is link state. The, in link state algorithm, each router can have a full topology of the total network, and they will calculate the routes according to this topology. So, for example, in this network, actually, each router will send a link state advertisement to the neighbors, and the neighbors will collect all the LSAs from all the other routers. And in the LSA, actually, the uh, link state information is included. For example, the cost of the link is included in the LSA. And then after receive all the link state advertisement from all the other nodes, they the router will store all these LSAs into a database, which is called the link state database. 
and the link state database actually contains the description of all router interfaces on the network. So until now, a router will know the full network topology based on the LSDB's description. Then after knowing the topology of the network, the router can calculate the best path. Actually, given this graph of the network, he can search for the shortest path tree, right? So for example, this R3 can find that um, if I'm going to R4, then this is my shortest link. And if I'm going to R1, this will be the shortest, shortest path because this path will have high cost because this link um, has much lower rate. And then for R2, he will find that although there are three hops, but the cost for this path will be short, it will be smaller than the cost for this path. So he, it will select this path to be the shortest. So uh, given this uh, network topology, the router can calculate the shortest path tree. And then given this shortest path tree, they can calculate the routing table, write the next hub router for every destination into the routing table. So this is the summary of the link state routing protocols. First, every node, every router should communicate with each other to set up the neighbor relationship. And then they will transmit information to collect the cost on each link or the link state of each link. After the link state uh, is calculated, they will send the link state advertisement to neighbors. And by collecting all the information, they, they maintain this link state database. And then they form graph of the network. And then they can calculate the best path and write the best path into the routing information base.